Galveston is an island off the coast of Texas. You know, we're set aside from the rest of the world. I'm born on the island, and they say that islanders have salt water in our veins. So we're, we're a breed amongst ourselves. Ike hit Galveston in 2008. Hurricane Ike flooded 75% of Galveston Island. A flood of, uh, of this nature is unimaginable. And I say that for this reason. You look around this room and you see how the furniture is all set in places and probably been sitting in these places for years. In Ike, in my living room, when you opened up the front door and looked into the living room, the sofa, love seat, chair, table, coffee table, rug, was all on the north side of the room, as if somebody had just taken something and pushed it all at the same time. My house sits three feet up off of the ground. I got probably a foot, almost a foot of water inside my house. My, my wife and I went in and we were working our way around in the house downstairs. I said, well, come on, Layla, and I said, we, we need to at least start getting some of this stuff out of here. Start cleaning up some of this stuff. And all she said was, Leon, I can't do this. After we had gotten everything cleaned up, you wouldn't begin to imagine that almost every household in the city of Galveston that was maybe three blocks south of Broadway, four blocks south of Broadway, had piles of furniture in front of the house. When you start thinking about sea levels, I think of it this way. We're an island. There is nothing we can do about what's happening with water. It's, it's like you, you fill a glass to the brim with water and you take a one millimeter pearl and drop it in it. The water spills over and that's a very small pearl. Uh, Galveston's the same way. Um, the more the Arctic melts, the more water we're going to have to fight off. How do you fight it off? I hope I don't live long enough to see it go away. Yeah, I haven't been to this place since Ike hit, so. Uh, it brings back a lot of memories, you know. It, like I said earlier, it's kind of like an eerie feeling because we rode it out in this place and she's still standing. He didn't really damaged, damaged except pretty much the inside of it. The second half of the uh, storm, like I was saying, the, the second half of the storm, uh, the winds were stronger, you know, and everything. And the house started shaking then. I didn't notice the house shaking until the second half of the storm, which was really bad. And uh, that's when the door flew open. That's, that's the main door to the rooms up there. And so when, when that door flew, and it, it was a big, huge door, and in the, in the, it was about that thick, the door was, and the wind blew it open. Just whoosh. So when the wind blew it open, I lost my windows, everything throughout, because I had furniture down the hallway too that I couldn't fit in the room, you know, aquariums and, and, and nightstands and stuff. And uh, all that stuff, you could just see it going down the hallway, just whoosh flying down the hallway. But I tell you, when when the storm ended, 
it was like a parade. It was like one huge big parade just going on, 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 and then the end. You could just see it leaving. You could see it leaving. The birds start flying again. The sun came out. My partner was still sleeping and I nudged him. I said, hey, I said, the storm's over with. The storm's over with. He jumped up and I said, let's go walk around the island. See, you know, just look around. That's when the city allowed people, people were lined up on 45 to get back in. And then they, they would put on your car LL. The LL was abbreviation for look and leave. They would let you come on the island to look, I guess savage what you can, and leave. The reason why they told you to leave is because it was inhabitable. There was no running water, there was no electricity, no grocery stores, no, no uh, emergency personnel. It was inhabitable. Now, after Ike had passed, you know, my thoughts of climate change, um, I'm more thoughtful of it now. I pay more attention to it now, you know. Um, climate change is gonna have to take everybody to fix it, you know. Uh, and, I, and I honestly believe people are talking more about it than doing things about it. It's kind of like they're sitting around waiting if it's really gonna happen. And we sat and we looked out the window. We looked at the rain, we looked at the wind, we looked at the water swelling outside but never experienced what we experienced here with Ike. Icebergs are breaking apart, you know, faster than we thought. And, and my common sense tells me that, you know, with those glaciers and icebergs breaking, it's causing the seas to swell. Where did that water go? You know, water, water like that just don't go, you know, don't just evaporate like that. And then it's probably causing, you know, these uh, hurricanes these uh, hurricanes that we never experienced before. So, uh, but like I said, my view uh, of, of climate change is, is I'm more knowledgeable about it now than I have been in the past. And it's really scary. When I was in school 17 years ago, you know, we didn't, um, climate change wasn't really a, an issue. You may have heard about it, you know, but as time went on, you, you'd notice it. And even in my head now, I'm thinking, I'm hoping I'm dead and gone if anything happens worse than Ike. I don't know if and when something's gonna happen, but I just hope I'm not here. Let's say, let's hope it's like 60 years later. <laughs> I won't be here, <laughs> of course. We have a big part of the climate change. I don't know if it's too late or not, it's not happening by itself. There are things that we're doing to the planet to cause these this, the climate to change. Like during Hurricane Ike, we all came together. That was a devastating time for me because uh, when I came back and found out that my house had burned down to the ground, that made me really sad because I had all my photos, my toys, my videos, Everything that I had was inside the house and it burned down to the ground. A couple of weeks later, we got a call saying that your house is burning down. My parents, they were, they were like, what, is this a prank? No, they were like, your house is really burning down. So about uh, two to three weeks later, we finally came back to the island and the neighbors came over. They were like, yeah, your house burned down. And when I saw the house for the first time, I was shocked to see it still standing. But then when my grandparents and my parents walked inside the house, everything that was of value to me and to my parents and to everybody, it was gone. Everything that I had, it was gone. That affected me greatly. That made me, now that I think about it, it made me appreciate the things that I have right now because that lets me know that if another hurricane comes, I know that I have something that I can remember, I can relate back to. With all of the um, things that we have, such as electronics and and as much energy as we use up every day, and you think about um, 
like the coal and the fuel and just everything in general. Like you hear scientists talk about like uh, global warming is going to happen and stuff like that. And you don't believe it at first until you actually see something of it. And I'm just worried for my generation coming up because we only have God knows how much time left on here. And with everything that's going on, I don't want the earth to be in danger of like water rising up and over topping and covering us up over the land. And, and what do we do? The whole world is basically on an island on its own. Like we don't have nothing else to do. Wow. I'm I'm speechless. I really can't explain it. My dream for the world of my dream for the future of our world and its people. The melodic sounds of Louis Armstrong singing what a wonderful world conjures visions of people living in a world immersed in tranquility. My dream will be fulfilled when the bridge is built that leads to world harmony. The community is the foundation to the bridge of universal harmony. The community must have an active participation to provide resources and programs that will educate people about various cultures, schools, churches, community centers, civic groups, and local businesses are needed to buy into this concept of cultural awareness. Being more aware of the way various people live within a society enables the community to build bonds. These bonds will help us reach the next level. Thank you.